Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ari and this is another episode of The Trans Atheist. From the heart of our nation's capital, here's Family Research Council President Tony Perkins. So today we're going to talk about an interview that I recently heard on Right Wing Radio. It's called the American Family um, Association, American Family Radio. This is Washington Watch with Tony Perkins. He is the founder of a right-wing religious group called the Family Research Council, and he does the show on politics, and today he's interviewing Kirk Cameron. Kirk Cameron is a 1980s like TV, child TV star, uh, Growing Pains. I'm sure you, you may have heard of it. He's also a right-wing evangelical, anti-LGBT, anti-atheist, the whole deal. So let's listen to the interview and my responses. I'm Tony Perkins, and this is Washington Watch. Thanks for joining us on this Wednesday. The website, TonyPerkins.com. All right, as I've discussed throughout the program, we live in a culture, quite frankly, that mocks biblical truth and demands the embrace of obvious lies. They want you to be silent in the face of these lies, if not celebrate them. Well, nothing less than full support of this is acceptable to the transgender crusade. So I'm not even sure what Tony means by these uh, biblical truths and then calling the other side lies. Before you call it a biblical truth, you first have to prove its truthfulness. And if you're going to compare it to, you know, this other side's lies, um, when it comes to like full support and embrace, I don't think that's accurate as to what we're talking about within the trans community. I honestly don't care if you support or embrace me. I mean, it's nice to have support, but ultimately what we're looking for from the evangelical right-wing community is to simply stay out of our way. To paraphrase uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, to keep your foot off our necks. You know, it's not about you agreeing with us. It's about you stopping from enacting transphobic laws against us. And that's kind of the problem with people like Tony Perkins. That's exactly what he's fighting for, is to instill his religious doctrine into our secular the sad world. reality was evident this week when local politicians and activist groups tried to shut down a story hour taking place right here in Washington, D.C., a public library featuring our good friend, Christian actor and author Kirk Cameron and other conservative writers. What is so scary? What is so scary to them about Christian authors reading books? Well, joining me now here in studio to discuss this event is author and actor Kirk Cameron. Kirk, welcome back hey, to the man. program. Great, great to see you, Tony. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, they Good. can't even see the irony. He's literally talking about how horrible it is that supposedly activists tried to shut down this event that Kirk Cameron was doing without keeping in mind that his group, the organization American Family Radio, right-wing evangelical groups, are the ones that have been showing up to shut down Drag Queen Story Hour all across the nation, acting like this is some horrible thing of grooming children but when you actually listen to, and, and let me just clarify, when they say grooming children, they're really talking about indoctrination, which is funny because that's what they do best. And when you hear a little bit about these books that they're going to talk about in this, it really is about indoctrination. But they don't even see the irony of being infuriated that someone tried to shut down their event when their whole M.O. is shutting down LGBT events. The irony is you, truly uh, lost. Thanks for dropping by. So uh, you just came from the library. Tell us about it. Yeah, we just came from the library, uh, Cleveland Park Library, and we had a great turnout of families. Uh, we had actually sort of a, a dream team of authors there uh, f uh, from Brave Books, and uh, these were books uh, including my book on the fruit of the spirit and biblical wisdom to a book about uh, ha uh, fostering trust between parents and children rather than kids keeping secrets from their parents, which uh, kids are being taught to do now in schools. Really? Kids are being taught to keep secrets from their parents. Is he going to offer any proof of that? This is more of the transphobic propaganda. The whole argument is that they're secretly transing your kids in school. And now, you know, you're, the kids are being said, told, don't tell mom or dad about, you know, being trans here at school. When the fact of the matter is, is what really ends up going on is that schools are offering safe spaces. So they're not outing kids. To parents because in some cases you have parents that are 
not supportive. Parents who might be, oh, I don't know, like Kirk Cameron. So the whole point is that no one is doing anything to the kids. No one is telling them to keep a secret. Teachers are simply refusing, as they rightfully should, to out LGBT students. And that's what they're trying to enact laws on to make it where teachers are forced to out students if they find out they're gay. And, and other topics. So Sean Spicer was there. Jack Posobiec was there. Uh, uh, Haya Reichick was there from Lives of TikTok. I, I was there reading my book. And it was a great time with parents and kids. And um, it was great. Yeah, Libs of TikTok. Did you hear that, Liz? Sean Spicer, a disgraced former spokesperson for former President Trump. Libs of TikTok, an organization that literally, well, a, a, I don't know if really want to call it an organization, a Twitter handle uh, with Haya Reichick, that's literally responsible for doxing trans people, trans teachers, allies, that leads to death threats against these people, people showing up at their home. And these are the kinds of people that good Christian men like Kirk Cameron and Tony Perkins want to associate themselves with. What I Says like a lot. This and what I think people like about this, that's why there's such a movement surrounding this, is that this is a way to simply make a statement by doing the right thing and offering an alternative. I mean, they have these drag queen story hours, and we can show up and, you know, if you, if you want to protest, that's fine. You can I protest. I have no problem with alternative events. If someone wants to read a Christian book somewhere, as long as people have the right to either show up or not show up, you know, that's fine. Um, even if it's something that I find personally offensive in the book, so what? The parents can decide if they want to let their kids there, just like the parents can decide if they want to let their kids at a drag queen story hour. It's a decision for parents to make, and we're good with that. The problem is they want to shut down events that differ from them altogether. They can talk about, you know, they want to shut us down. They want to shut the Christian voices down. No, Christian voices are all throughout this country. Find a politician that's not a Christian. 90% of them are probably higher than that, or at least claim to be. So no one is getting shut down. You may get held accountable if you say something vile and bigoted, not legally accountable, but there may be the fact that people don't like you. Perhaps I don't buy your product anymore. Perhaps I don't visit your store. Or I don't, you know, buy things from your company. That's a right that we all have, uh, no matter which side of the aisle you're on. I'm not saying shut down events. I'm simply saying that they shouldn't be shut shutting down events either. And when you're bringing with you people like the Proud Boys and you're using this groomer language and trying to say that there's this horrible threat to children if they witness a drag queen, but it's perfectly okay if they sit there and listen to a book read by Libs, the Libs of TikTok founder who has actually caused people to get death threats. I think your priorities might be just a little screwed up. But rather, why not do something positive? Why, yeah. why not provide the alternative, i.e. the truth, to these children, which is exactly what you're doing, and people are responding in a very positive way. Uh, one guy can't save the nation. Uh, a political figure can't. An entertainment figure can't. Uh, what we need is for the people, the grassroots, the moms and dads, the grandparents, uh, the business owners, uh, and we need to elect representatives. Um, you know, one of the things that that uh, I appreciate about you is that you're 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 so great at helping us understand principles of the Constitution. We keep Tony Perkins, great at helping us understand principles of the Constitution. Yeah, I don't think so. Tom, Tony Perkins literally does not believe in the separation of church and state, which is established, which is, you know, kind of spelled out in the Establishment Clause and the Free Exercise Clause. It's further explained by Thomas Jefferson in the Danbury Letter. So that is not a concept that Tony Perkins believes in. What Tony Perkins does believe in is theocracy, where he gets to vote for right-wing politicians, send those right-wing politicians to Washington, D.C. or our state houses, and have them write laws that are basically just his interpretation of the Bible. That's why we end up with these transphobic laws, these homophobic laws, these anti-abortion laws. It's all based on theocracy, not on constitutionality. So let's look at a couple of clips showing Tony Perkins' wonderful grasp of the Constitution. 
Well, the reason government is corrupt is because there's not godly people in it. If we want godly government, which Proverbs says, you know, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, there's a reason. That's right. Because the righteous will rule in a way that is beneficial to, to all of society. Everybody. What I have always found, and, and this is true in the natural as well as the spiritual, where the enemy doesn't want you to go, they'll make the most noise. They, they'll, they'll, they'll start to say, look, separation of church and state, we don't need, why do they say that? <laughs> Well, it's not really separation of church and state. It's a st separation of God and humanity. I believe that we will give an account as Americans, as Christians in America, for the leaders that we have selected over time that have led this nation in the direction it is. My hope was that every pagan leader and force of darkness in the country was going to get converted uh, in order to save the country. I don't know that I'd have a whole lot of hope. Yeah, we got to watch out for all those pagan leaders in Washington, D.C. I have no clue what the hell he's talking about. I think anybody who doesn't agree with them, he's just classifying it as a pagan leader. So congratulations, you're probably an honorary pagan today. And, and when that comes, we stand firmly on biblical truth. And there's it could not be clearer to me in this battle over human sexuality mm. as God has designed us mm. and created us to be. Not only not only is the Bible very clear on this, science is clear on this, and, and we should not hesitate to stand for this truth. So I don't know how clear the Bible is on the issue of human sexuality. There's definitely some conflicting ideas. That's why we have a whole bunch of denominations, including LGBT affirming churches, but you know what? That's a religious conversation that the religious can have amongst themselves. As an atheist, it's none of my business. However, um, there are some things that the Bible is pretty clear on if you want to use that as your moral foundation, like, oh, I don't know, slavery, perfectly allowed within the Bible. Uh, forcing a rapist to marry his victim, perfectly allowed within the Bible. You know, marrying multiple wives, perfectly allowed within the Bible. Murdering a whole tribe of people that you might disagree with because God says so. A-OK -okay in the Bible. So I'm not really using that as my standard for morality and how I should live my life. As for science, science is a good place to look. And if we look at the science, the science on trans people, on gender identity, yeah, it is fairly clear. Over the number of, te number of um, studies that have been performed, we found that trans-affirming care leads to a reduction in suicidality, that trans people who are affirmed and accepted by their family and their friends and their community thrive and do much better than those that do not. We've also learned that things like conversion therapy that people like Tony Perkins and Kirk Cameron love and approve of, not only does it not work, it doesn't convert anyone from gay to straight or from trans to cis. The only conversion it ever does is it'll convert people from open to closet case or it'll convert them from living trans person to dead trans person. It doesn't work. It leads to an increase in suicidality and that's why a number of of areas, a number of states and municipalities have made it illegal because number one, it's false advertising when it says it's going to change you. It doesn't. And number two, it's a sincere health risk. The debate over sexuality, they're talking about, you know, drag queen story hour that hurts no one. They're talking about the fact that, you know, parents have the right along with their doctors to look at the proper care for their children. And we know what Generally speaking, the proper care is for trans children. It's not as simple as surgeries. There are no surgeries going on on kids. We talked about this in previous videos. That's a long process. But that's what he's talking about. The science is clear. The science is clear, and it supports trans people. The science is clear. It does not support the religious biblical narrative, not only on trans people, but on just about anything else. There was no global flood. These people believe in it. The six-day creation, not how it happened. Science has already proven otherwise. So they're on pretty shaky ground, and they basically know that they're full of crap. But they'll still keep preaching it. They'll use science when it's convenient, 
and try to twist it and say, well, we're for science because we believe in our third grade understanding of biological science without knowing the nuances, but we're not going to agree with it when it's talking about vaccines or creation or the fact that there is no global flood. It's a bunch of... Yeah, I, we, we have to. Uh, if, if we don't stand for the basic building blocks of the family and uh, the the distinction between male and female, what will we stand for? And if we won't yeah. stand for the right. the, 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 the the responsibility to protect the hearts and minds of our children, our toddlers, then when will we ever stand? And if we respond. That's right. Because it, you're right. Everything that people trust in is imploding. And so if we lead the way, I, right. I, I think you're absolutely right. It is set up for a return to God. Okay, so it's a bit of a long video, but that's kind of the end of it. Uh, I cut out some of the, I don't know, less important parts of the interview, tried to cut it down a bit. But the reason I did this, aside from responding to some of the ignorance and just kind of letting out my own frustrations, was this is the type of thing right now, this is American Family Radio. I've talked about it in a number of videos. I'm sure there will be more. But when I say that they engage in transphobia on pretty much every program, every day, as many times as possible, they spread these false narratives. They talk about genital mutilation and, and groomers and all of this stuff every single day. And this is pumped directly into people's cars as they're going to work. Now, I listen because I like to keep track of what's going on. But the reason I put this out here is because for people who are already religious, people who are uninformed, people who maybe are not supportive of diversity within our country, this is what's being pumped into them every day. So when you see those proud boys standing outside of a drag queen story time, when you see the person holding that sign saying that God hates, insert F word here, when you see all of this violence and this bigotry and these people that are attacking the LGBT community every day, these are the people that are helping do it. They are indoctrinating it every single day. They are driving this into people's heads. They are stirring people up that there's a war a brew a brewing and they're actually the ones creating a war and they're creating it against fellow citizens here in the country. We're seeing this type of hate increase. And it's because of the radical right-wing evangelical indoctrination that happens not only in our churches, but on our radio programs and on television. That's what's happening in the country. And that is why we have a problem. We have it locally in local churches that spread the propaganda. You'll see that I did a video on my local right-wing cult. They've done sermons on transgenderism and all of this bull. We had the statement at CPAC where a speaker, Knowles, I can't remember his first name right now, but you guys, I'm sure, have seen the story. Michael Knowles, that's it. Where he literally said that transgenderism must be eradicated that is what we've got going on. We have the makings, the beginnings of a genocide. And it's being perpetrated, it's being planned out by Christian fundamentalist evangelicals who are trying to take over the government, who are trying to instill this into our laws in a secular nation built on separation of church and state, which they are trying to tear down. You see it in Ohio, where I live. By the way, if you're in my local area and you want to find out what this station is, you can look them up, but in this side of the state, on northwest Ohio, it's 91.5 if you're in the area where I'm at, um, you'll be able to tune in and hear the insanity on a daily basis. But this is what's being pumped in. This is why we're seeing the radicalization. This is why we're seeing these laws. This is why we're seeing book bans and trans health care bans and tram, uh, trans sports bans and bathroom bills and people who are talking about overturning marriage equality and, you know, Roe v. Wade being overturned and local abortion bans and state abortion bans, all of this is because of evangelicalism, the extremist. And frankly, it's to me, it 
qualifies as almost a form of terrorism when you are having trans people, LGBT people, every single day, every single session of Congress, having to worry, is this the day, is this the session where I lose my human rights, the very few that we already have. That is what we have going on. That is why we have to be involved. That is why if you are currently a non-voter, you need to get your ass registered and get out there and vote and vote these people out. And if you are a voter, you need to be called your Congress people and letting them know that these laws are not representative of you and that you will hold them accountable at the ballot box for doing it. We have to stand up, we have to take action, and we have to start fighting back, legally fighting back. Let me clarify in case somebody wants to bring something stupid up. I am talking about protest. I am talking about voting. I am talking about throwing the bums out on their asses through the ballot box. And that is what we have to do. We have to fight. Today is tra the Trans Day of Visibility. We also have protests going on across the country called Trans Day of Vengeance. And the fact of the matter is, all that is based on about with Trans Day of Vengeance, that language is based in anger, and we have justified anger, and we have to put it to use. We have to vote, we have to get the youth of this country registered to vote and involved in their local politics from everything from dog catcher to President of the United States. We've got to be out there. We've got to make the change, because if we're waiting for somebody to change it for us, honey, you're going to keep on waiting. you got to do the footwork. So, Thank you for joining me on The Trans Atheist. If you have ideas for other videos, please leave them in the comments or email me. Let me know what you think. Always please subscribe and watch any new videos. And I will see you again very, very soon. Thank you.